Hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, today, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get the um, going to get the tail set up to uh, drill the holes for the mounting brackets, which are over here. For these guys, right here, and there was something that I didn't mention the other day that I want to before I forget. Uh, it's really important when you're custom making things like this that you keep track of where everything is because you've you've kind of drilled it and cut it and fit it to go in a very particular spot. So um, what we have to do is this is the uh, we'll remark these on the bottom later, um, but this is the top top left and this is the top left and this is the top right you don't want to lose track of this otherwise you'll be doing a lot of trial and error fitting and then we've got the uh, bottom right mark both just in case something rubs off um, And we'll get this one. Bottom left. And bottom left. Okay. Now we won't lose track of that. Um, all right, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up. And what we need to do is mark the location for where we're going to drill. So in order to do that, I need to know the center line. Let me get a little closer here. I need to know the center line of this member right here. So I'll draw a line across here. And then I need to know the center line of this member right here which is the same thickness as this one. Uh, let's just look at it. It's RS10, so it's 5 eighths. So, Get this out. All right, and we do the same down here. We got a little epoxy there. All right, so I got that one marked, and I got that one marked down there. So now we can uh, put it back on the plane, and then we will work to, let's go this way. We will work to get it, um, Square. And once we get it square, we'll utilize those lines. That's where the center center of our bracket hole will be. 
Now I have the rear marked at the center already. From when we built it, so. All right, we'll just do a quick double check on our uh, measurement. Let's get a measure from this side. So 45 inches. And from this side. It is 45 and a sixteenth. Show it to you in one second.
So we got a vertical pin. And now we're gonna set the, uh, oh, let me show you that so you can see it. So this is how we're doing this. I've got myself a vertical pin right there in the center. And now I have a center line back here on the fuselage and on here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this centered up on that line right there. Like so. And then we have to, uh, we're going to use our pin I won't be able to do this with this in my hand, so let's back it off here. So now we're going to use our pin to hook our tape measure. We're going to measure to this outside corner. And I have 103 and 3 sixteenths. Actually, 103 and a quarter right to the corner. We're gonna come up here. This just has to rotate just the tiniest amount. Right we are centered. So we're going to come in with some clamps. I'm going to double check on the center line. It's just dead on. It's right on. Right on the center. Alright. Um, just going to check one more time. Yep, the 
That's it. All right, so we'll mark these. Um, and we're going to have a uh, left front. left aft and then we're going to have a right front and a right aft okay now it's time to time to get on the deck floor and do it so all right so I can see my line under here so I'm gonna put this centered up on my line and that's gonna put me right there And as we've done before, I'm only interested in, in getting a, sits nicely in that corner by the way. Just want to get a mark. right here and then we will drill those with our square block we've been using so um, it's actually just helps keep the drill vertical while we drill through these so um, we'll come back to that
right, so now I just have to come over and drill the uh, drill these holes right here and right here, and then on this side. Uh, with the drill, before I do that, um, I wanted to get some uh, weights for you. Just, I know some of you were curious, just strictly as a reference point. I mean, everybody's build is going to be different. Mine is all Douglas fir, so mine is obviously going to be different than a kit-built aircraft. A little bit stronger, a little bit heavier. Um, probably. So... So what, uh, uh, some of you were curious about the, like the rudder and the, uh, stab. I'll take the tubes off just to weigh those. We'll get some weights on the, and there may be some hinges in. It doesn't really matter. It's just a little bit of extra weight. This is just, uh, just to give you a, a reference point. Um, I can tell you that my wings, my Wings and ailerons um, weigh about uh, 37 pounds each combined, the wing and the aileron. Um, so I weighed those earlier. Those are about 37 pounds each. One's a little, just maybe just a few, just a tiny bit lighter than the other one. Um, not much though. <clears throat> so what I have is a... Uh, uh, just have three mechanical mechanical scales. Um, you can get these pretty inexpensively from Walmart. And what we'll do is uh, I'll just get one by each of the each of the wheels. If you haven't seen an airplane weighed before when it comes time to do weight and balance and everything this is how you do it you use three scales so I'm just gonna zero these up right there and then we'll just pick up the plane and slide them under here and we'll go over here and do the same so this is just where we currently are, obviously. Uh, and we'll come back here to the tail wheel. All right, and then for the uh, for this exercise, it's just additive. So we just go around and we add up what we see. So, all right, that one is uh, 12 pounds on the tail. This one is 32, 4, 6, 38 pounds. 12 plus 38 plus <clears throat> 10, 12. <clears throat> and this one should be close to the same. This one's uh, 32, 4, 36 pounds. So we'll add uh, 36. So that's uh, 86 pounds as we currently sit, so let's write that down. So we got 86, and then uh, I'm just gonna say uh, 37 and 37 for the, the two wings. Let's start there. And we'll take this scale here and we'll weigh the, uh, See if we can get a weight on the uh, stabilizer here. All right, 
right, the stab is two, four. We're gonna call this maybe four point four. So let's go 4.4 on the stab. Set that out of the way. And then uh, for the rudder, Take the tubes off. And, uh, see what kind of weight we get out of this one. Um, let's make sure we're on zero here. We're just going to call it two pounds. Might be just a a hair under but let's call it two anyway so we're right down 2.0 <clears throat> when it comes to your final weight you're uh, in the you're in the it's all together and you're weighing it on the three scales so it's a little easier to have your additive weights let's get the Elevator. See what that is. Get this guy out of the way. Still on zero. Yep. All right, let's call the elevator three pounds. Since that one's right in there, three point zero. Um, and then hopefully we can weigh the we can weigh the rudder. It's pretty light, so the scale might not register it very well. We're just going to say it weighs one pound, so. Since the needle's right in the middle. All right. Let's get that out of the way. All right, so that's all the components as they stand right now. And uh, let's see what we got here. All right. We got 86 plus 37 plus 37 plus 4.4 plus 2.0 plus 3 plus 1. So that's 170 pounds for the airframe right now, 170.4. <clears throat> I think our Engine is going to weigh 89 by the time you put tubing and everything else up there. Let's just call it 90 pounds. So, got 90 pounds of engine. Uh, that's uh, 260.4 pounds. So, <clears throat> 260.4. Um, without uh, strut tubes and uh, obviously covering. Uh, I haven't really done any math on, on what I think covering weighs finished. Um, but uh, but 100 and, or 170 for the airframe as it currently sits, uh, 260 overall. At the state I'm uh, currently at, I, I feel pretty darn good about that. So. Um, I'm trying to predict where I'm going to come in weight-wise. I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm guessing I'm going to be in the uh, like 
maybe right around 300 pounds. So that's, uh, that's what I'm shooting for. I would love it if that's the case. And as the saying goes, um, if you're carrying a little extra, the pilot could always use to lose a few. So <laughs> if the pilot drops 20 pounds, <laughs> that doesn't matter. So, okay. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna, let me get these drilled out here. Uh, I'll get these holes drilled and we'll, we'll see. Hopefully we have a good match. All right. All right, then we'll walk it over and uh, get it set on here. Great, so I got the uh, I got the brackets on now. You can see the, uh, the front and the back. Um, everything fit good. Um, when I got to the back, I just had to uh, just had to run my drill through through these two um, to get a nice fit. So everything worked out well, though. So so that's all. That's all good, and everything's sitting nice and flat. So I'm, when I tighten these, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to uh, be bending the bracket at all, <clears throat> which was my main concern. I wanted to make sure that everything stayed nice and flat. So, um, yeah. So I think I'll put the uh, put the tubes back on, put the stabilizer on. Um, and uh yeah and i that will uh that will be it for today i may i may go ahead and tap these uh here these need to be tapped for um one eighth npt uh, because they get these guys right here this is basically the fair lead for the for the cable is this nylon fitting here so once I get that tapped, then this screws in. Uh, and the cable runs right through there. So, yeah. So let me put the stab on, put the tubes on, just temporarily. Um, and then I'll, uh, uh, yeah, that'll be it. So um, I'll be right back. All right, so I got this... Uh, I just test fit the uh, the rudder and the uh, elevator, and that uh, everything just worked out just super nice. I mean, uh, everything's really smooth. Uh, I don't have this completely. I just have it kind of safety put in place with the nuts on the bottom. I don't have it locked down yet. So, uh, but everything's nice and smooth. Everything worked out great. And uh, I now realize why there was no plywood on the top side because you got those two bolts there that uh, are, would not clear probably if the uh, if there was some plywood on the top side. So um, good thing I made sure I had plenty of epoxy there. There's it's nice and solid. I went ahead and tapped these for the uh, for the one eighth uh, NPT. Um, fittings and those are the uh, the fair leads for the uh, rudder the rudder cables and you can see where they they basically um, have to add these two blocks right here underneath and then they get mounted to those and that just allows the cable to come up and clear the uh, clear the top of the elevator or top of the stabilizer and then back to the turnbuckles tried to buy the turnbuckles this weekend but they were back ordered um 
our industry is kind of suffering right now. Um, I did get the cable. Uh, I was able to pick up the cable. They had that in stock, and uh, I got some swages and uh, a uh, go no go guide, and that'll be. That'll be coming along soon, so i um, just going to grab this and put it back in my box so I don't misplace these. Got those two guys. So that'll be, uh, that'll be coming along soon, and uh, that'll, that'll be, um, I have no idea where I was going with that. All right, just skip that. So. Yeah, so uh, thanks for uh, thanks for checking out another video and uh, hanging out with me today. And we've got a lot done, so that feels really good. And now the next uh, the next step, now that we've got uh, that done, is I'm going to work on the windscreen and I'm going to work on the turtle the um, headrest back here, and then. Uh, already kind of started cutting out some cutting out some sides and stuff over here so anyway um, yeah so if you're not a subscriber hey I invite you to hit the subscribe button and the little bell right next to it so you can know uh, every time I post a new video and you can follow along with the process um, and the uh, progress here so all right I will uh, I'll catch you later